I was blacklisted. Um, I finally did leave RKO, but only for a short time. And, uh, and then Hughes asked me to come back to rewrite it, to write a script that was written by a man named Paul Jericho, whom I didn't know. Uh, and the script was sent to me, and I called and said, okay. I said, but I, I said, you know, this script is a pretty good script. Why was Jericho fired? And uh, Bob uh, Sparks, who was the producer of, of uh, His Kind of Woman, said, well, Howard doesn't like the way he combs his hair, parts his hair, which I didn't understand. But uh, anyway, I, we arranged to meet in his office on Monday at 10 o'clock. And on the way to RKO, I was at a stop signal, and a car pulled up beside me, and it was Bob Sparks. So I tapped my horn and waved like this, and he looked at me, his eyes widened, and he shot through the uh, intersection. Uh, you know, it was insane. And I watched him disappear down Sunset, and I thought, my God, what has happened? Uh, has, has the project been canceled? Has he lost his mind? Or has my political past caught up with me? I got there and found that they wouldn't let me on the lot. So I handed the guard the script and said, give this to Mr. Sparks with my compliments, and I drove home and called my agent and said, told him that I had been blacklisted. He didn't even know I'd been a member of the Communist Party. But he, and he didn't think I, uh, I was blacklisted. He thought it might just be a personal thing with Hughes. But he found I was blacklisted. So I wrote a spec script called Hangman's Knot. And I'd heard that there was a black market that was in which blacklisted writers were making a living. But when I finished the script, one, it was awfully good. I liked it a lot. And two, I questioned whether that blacklist could possibly work. How would it work? Uh, I mean, they don't buy scripts. They buy scripts and talk about them. They call the writer in and they ask him questions. They ask for changes. I said, how do you do this anyway? Using a pseudonym isn't the way. You've got to have a, a writer friend who is willing to live very dangerously, uh, <clears throat> who will claim to have written it and then make some kind of deal with you, and, and it would be a very complex deal, because according to the IRS, he'd be getting paid, not you. So it would be very complex and very dangerous. Uh, and I thought, in fact, so dangerous and so complicated, I don't want to do it. And so I told Mike that I was going to send the script out with my name on it, Mike Levy, my agent. And uh, he said, Jesus, wait, you know, he says, they'll just, you're, you're blacklisted. He says, I checked, you're blacklisted. And he says, I'm not going to buy it. And I said, Mike, have you ever read the Waldorf Declaration, which was the declaration that the uh, studio chiefs made, saying that they would no longer employ anyone who was a member of the Communist Party. Now, were you hiding your past affiliation? Or no, were you pretty no. open about it? Uh, well, I wasn't open about it, but I wasn't, uh, I, I was a little, I had never been mentioned. I was never mentioned anywhere as a former communist. Never. So how'd you get blacklisted? Because the FBI was giving, and so was the American Legion, was giving HUAC the names of all, of every man who ever joined the Communist Party. They were all, by that time, very well known. So at the time you wrote this spec script, this hangman's knot, were you terrified about your future in this business? Were you scared? Yeah, oh yeah. Well, you know, in those days, you didn't think, no one thought the blacklist would last very long. But I figured that I was in trouble for a year or two anyway. No one thought it was going to last as long as it did. Nobody. So with the blacklist, how were you able to sell this script and ultimately direct it? I, uh, I just, I told Mike, I'm going to, I have never been mentioned, I said to Mike, and I said, and the Waldorf Declaration does not say they will not buy a script. It says they will not employ a communist. And Mike says, oh, Roy, that's bullshit. He says, you ought to find some way. And I said, no, I'm going to send it out under my own name. And I did, and it was immediately, uh, offers were made by, by Warner Brothers and by Columbia. And I, in other words, I was apparently right that they might not be willing to employ a former communist, but they were willing to buy a script from a former communist because it didn't say in the Waldorf Declaration that they wouldn't buy a script. So then I said to Mike, 
and made him very angry. I said, Mike, I think that the whole thing is corrupt. I don't think anyone really feels it deeply, this whole business of the blacklist of people like me. Uh, and I think it's corrupt. And I'm going to insist that they hire me. He says, How are you, what are you talking about? I says, I'm going to notify Warners and Columbia that the script is theirs if they hire me to direct it. He, Mike went mad. He says, my God, that's so crazy for God's sake. Even in the right, the best of times, they wouldn't do that. And I said, yes, they would, Mike. They're constantly allowing writers who have written a script they want to direct it. That's, that's nothing new. He says, well, that's true. He says, but your case is different. And I insisted it be sent out. Warner Brothers checked in first, offering for the first time an amount. They, the first time they responded, it was just we're interested in talking about buying it. This time they said, we will buy it for $25,000, but we can't allow you to direct it. Then I got uh, a statement from Columbia, from Harry Joe Brown, who had an independent unit at Columbia with Randolph Scott. They made, I think, a picture or two every year. And that they had, they had a certain amount of money that they earned, and it was a good business for them and for Harry Cohn. And I thought, Jesus, here, they offered to let me, they wanted the script, and they were going to let me direct it for $17,000. In other words, if I took their offer, I was going to be paying $8,000 to direct this picture. And I decided it was worth $8,000 to prove that the blacklist was corrupt, that if they wanted something bad enough, they would violate it. Because Harry Cohn was a signator uh, to the Waldorf Declaration. So in hiring me, he was violating the Waldorf Declaration outright. And so I, and Mike was just furious because uh, he thought I was making a mistake. He says, Roy, when you have finished directing that picture, you're going to go right back on the blacklist. So what has it got you? It's cost you $8,000 and it's done you no good at all. He was right, by the way. So I, uh, I directed Hangman's Knot.